right, guys. Uh, combat circle drill. Woo! All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to break into three different groups. Okay. There will be two groups of seven, one group of six. I'll say it again. Two groups of seven and one group of six. Uh, what I want you guys to do is, is go ahead and find the groups, but I want you guys to try to stay around the same size, give or take. Okay, I'd rather not have my small student in with one of the bigger uh, uh, student groups or whatever right now. So go ahead, do me a favor and uh, find those groups. Two of seven, one of six, okay? Uh, Cameron's in, uh, Nikki is in the group, Max is in too. So make sure we go ahead and do that real quick. And then once you guys are done, I need you guys to pull on over and be seated right in front of this board right over here, okay? Go ahead and divide, go up and get those groups going. So real quick, so um, most of you guys are in groups of uh, seven. So once again, you'll have six out here. One, two, three, four, five, six. You'll have one person in the middle. Everybody's with me so far, okay? Uh, as far as the six people who are on the outside, here are the six people. The first one's going to be a big pad. Big pad just relates to a regular essential cycle. You guys know how to do that. You find out where the opening is for the kick. Go ahead and enter on in with your strikes and then use close quarters to obviously uh, take the person out as far as that goes. Second person is gonna be empty handed, but they're just gonna focus on chokes, okay? So you guys are focusing on chokes in addition to the fact of any kind of bear hugs as well. So you have those. Then we have our knife person who's gonna be wielding a knife. We have our stick person who's gonna be uh, using a stick. Uh, for those two weapons right there, we have soft knives that I want you guys to use and obviously soft sticks, okay? We have a gun that's gonna be the fifth person and the sixth person we call our supplier. What that means is they're gonna have one knife and one stick. And anytime during the drill, which I'll explain a little bit more here in a second, they're gonna go ahead, they're gonna take a weapon and kind of chuck it out there for the person, okay? Now the person in the middle can go ahead and grab it, but you don't wanna grab it at the expense of getting clobbered by the next person who's coming on in. So how we do this drill is this, the person in the middle is gonna be constantly attacked by any of these people right here. Okay, you could have a person come on in, attack you with a knife, maybe with a stick, someone bear hug you, whatever it is. Go ahead and do the proper defense, whatever it is. If it's, let's say, empty handed, you don't have any weapon on you and somebody comes in with a knife, you need to go ahead and take that, you know, you know, just take that person out of commission, right? Same thing with the stick thing. Same thing if someone comes in with a choke or a bear hug, we go ahead and we defend that as well. I never want the person in the middle to have any kind of breathing time. Okay, so if they're standing around for even a half a second, that means someone's not jumping on in. So you guys need to make sure the drill keeps on moving, keeps on moving, keeps on moving, okay? Now, the supplier here has an important job because like I said, you have a soft stick, okay, all right? You have a soft knife. Go ahead and chuck it in whenever you guys want to. When the person has an opening or can find an opening, they're gonna grab the weapon. They have one chance to use it against one attack and that's it. So if they go ahead and they grab a stick and someone else with a stick attacks them, they can defend themselves using that stick. Once that person is taken out, meaning the hand is smashed or something like that, then go ahead, drop that weapon. The supplier is responsible for going ahead and picking back at that weapon. Reason why that's important is I just don't want loose weapons on the floor and people are running around and everything like that. I want somebody to twist an ankle or roll an ankle or something like that. Okay, so that's how we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do that as well. So does everybody understand the six responsibilities right here? All right? For the group that has only six people in it, the gun person is also a supplier, okay? Let me remind you real quick, the supplier is only throwing a knife or a stick, they're not throwing in a gun. They're not throwing in a gun, okay? All right. As far as the attacks, let me review this one more time. Big pad person, go ahead, bump them as hard as you want to. They're gonna turn around, give them a kick target. They're gonna go ahead and blast them with strikes and then close it down with some close quarter moves. After that, we got choke and bear hug person. That's all they're doing, okay, all right? Next person is gonna be knife. Attack however you guys want to. Slashes, stabs, whatever you guys wanna do there. Stick, we know how to do that. Gun, let's keep it with just some five basic ones. Front, side, side, rear, kneeling is cool too, 
Okay, and then obviously we have the supplier. Any questions, comments, complaints before we get going? Um, yes, but the feeder, this is an intense drill, okay? You should be able to use your ninja skills and go on in there and go ahead and get that bear hug. And eyes, obviously, if it's a front choke or whatever, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult. But to answer your question in simple terms, yes. Okay, yes. This is an intense drill. This is an intense drill. So what's gonna happen is, is that everybody in the middle is gonna go for two minutes. Okay, that's a long time. It's a long time. You will get tired on out. You will get tired out, I guarantee you that. After we go ahead and we do that, we'll come back in, we'll have a little powwow, talk about your guys' experiences, everything with that, okay? If something screws up, you keep on going, okay? If you go ahead and you get hit with a stick, you get slashed with a knife, you just keep on fighting, okay? If your bear hug defense screws on up, find some other, find some other way out of it. Everybody with me? Comments, questions, complaints? So what we're gonna do is, in order to make sure that we have plenty of space right here, uh, I think the biggest corners uh, is gonna be, uh, let's have a group right here, okay, All right? Let's have a group in that back area right there, and then we'll have a group right up here as well, okay? So each group will need a big pad, okay? A knife, a stick, a gun, and then another knife and stick. Everybody with me on that? All righty, go ahead and separate into your groups. One here, one back there, one in the front. <clears throat> Stand that it's very, very tempting to go ahead and move out or whatever and just kind of get away from people. All right, it's partly the responsibility of the people who are doing the circle. Push them back in, I don't care, okay? And you don't need a pad to do any, you know, if, if Justin, let's say, is unarmed and he's coming over on this side and he's facing John, push him back in if he needs to, get, you know, get back in. Does that make sense? Okay, All right? So try to stay in the circle as much as possible. That was a great chill. Everybody give us a round of applause, nice job. What's the point of that drill? Raise your hand, what's the point of that drill? Why do we do that, yeah? Okay, mass attack possibly. Sure, what else? Good. Okay, all right. Okay, hiding a swivel, good. What else? What? Good. Good. Okay, all right. I'm not sure there's a there's a better drill that'll help you guys develop the skill of actually not thinking as much. Does that make sense? Okay, you know, you just go back to your fundamentals, your basic core stuff and what's needed to get out of that particular situation, right? Okay, all right? When I do that drill, and when I see people who do it well, I don't see them thinking, I see them reacting. Okay, all right? Because if they're thinking, what's the problem? They're getting hit, they're getting pushed around, they're getting you know attacked for longer periods of time. You follow me on that? Okay, so it's so important to do that. Uh, show of hands, okay, all right? Because I'll be raising my hand too during this drill. How many people, when you guys did this drill, whether it be today or a previous day, screwed up at least once, raise your hand? <laughs> yeah, okay, right? That drill forces you to mess up. You follow me on that? It forces you to mess up. I'm not expecting myself nor anybody here to go ahead and do a perfect round, okay, right? I would actually say if you did a perfect round, and remember, we were going for what, two minute rounds? Uh, if you guys are going through two minutes and having no mistakes, guess what? I'm probably saying that your group didn't push you hard enough or fast enough, right? Okay? And because everybody at least screwed up at least once, I think your groups did a really, really good job of doing that, right? So it's so important that we go ahead and we put ourselves in situations that we screw up. Not just so we can physically respond, but so we can mentally and emotionally respond. I'll say that again because it's so important. It's just not important that you physically respond. And what I mean by that is, is that if you physically do the wrong technique or your technique does not work for whatever reason, so you physically recover and can you know, find something physically to end that altercation. That's the first part. But can you mentally and emotionally recover as well, right? Okay. It's, you know, if I see beginner level students do a drill, it is very common for me to go ahead and watch them mess up. And what happens is they'll freeze up, 
and or you can see them critiquing themselves. You know, I'll even see people, and I've done it myself, where they will verbally start to break themselves, <laughs> right? Okay, right? The, the faster you can ditch your mistakes and just move on mentally and emotionally, the better off you're gonna be, plain and simple, right? Okay, right? And isn't that the same for obviously life as well, right? Okay, you know, the sooner we can go ahead and just move on from that mistake, not saying that we don't take time to learn from it or whatever, you know, but you'll learn from it after the altercation, you know? What's important right now and what I want you guys to take from this drill, how you guys can, you know, really relate it to real life is, is, you know, once again, deal with your screw ups in life because no one's gonna go through a whole day without messing up at least once, okay? Physically, mentally, and emotionally, recover as quickly as possible and then go ahead and move on. Any other comments or questions about this drill before I let you guys go, okay? Great drill, guys, very proud of you guys. Awesome as far as that stuff goes. Uh, one thing real quick, uh, can you grab, um, by my phone, is that Bill? Uh, I keep on forgetting to give this to him, so I can't forget it. Uh, Salim, referral, 100 bucks, it's all yours. Good. Guys, other than that, great job, great work today. If you guys can do me a favor, um, we need sticks boxed and they can be put back up. Knives thrown in the box as well and I need a total of six big pads left on out. You guys are out of here. Take care, just have to be good.